Mac Pro or iMac? So, what's up guys, Faria and welcome to Shades of Tech. On the left, you might recognize my main editing machine for the last five years, the 2014-27 inch iMac that I recently opened and completely upgraded to the maximum configuration. And here is the 6.1 Trashcan Mac Pro you might have spotted behind me in the latest video. I've been editing all the videos in the last months. If you want to know more why I got this Mac Pro in 2020, check this video. They are both 2014 machines, but which one is the best value machine you should buy in 2020? In the studio we have a 27-inch iMac with an Intel Core i7-4771 3.5 to 3.9 GHz 4-core 8 thread CPU, 30 GB of 1600 MHz DDR3 memory, and NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M and a 3TB of SSD and a 6.1 Mac Pro with an Intel Xeon E5-1620 V2 3.7 to 3.9 GHz 4-core 8 thread 64 GB of 1866 MHz DDR3 memory and dual AMD Fire Pro D300 and 256 GB of PCIe and VME storage This Mac configuration costed around $1200 and I graded it myself while the Mac Pro costed me around 1100 pounds but in the USA you can find it for around 13 to 14 $100. But let's run some benchmark, shall we? In the Geekbench fight test, the IMAX scores 16% more in single and 13 more in multi-core score, with a maximum of 3500. In Cinebench R20, again, we expected the IMAX to be better and it reached 1600, again, with a 14% more. But they are both 4 core 8 thread CPU, and for the IMAX, it's the max down configuration pushing the temperatures up to 99 degrees Celsius, while the Mac Pro is just the base CPU, so the Stellar is so much better around 60 degrees Celsius. So in real life, you wouldn't see big difference. Otherwise, the noise, the fan will be louder in the iMac. The SSD is another story. I tested the OWC Aura Pro X2 internally in both the machine, but the Mac Pro is the clear winner thanks to the faster technology of internal PCIe connection. It reached a blazing fast 1250 write and 1400 read against the 740 write and 770 read. It's twice as fast, so it's a really huge improvement. However, with booting times we saw basically the same with the Mac Pro being 10 seconds faster. On the GPU side, the Mac Pro base model crashes the base I make GPU getting 10 times better Geekbench metal test. With just a single GPU, so double GPU gets 20% faster. For video editors, this is a remarkable improvement if you use a lot of LUTs and effects. In gaming performance, Unigine Evan with high settings, the Mac Pro performs better with only one GPU but gets almost 500 score, 75% more of the Mac and 160% more FPS with a max of 60 FPS against the 24 on the Mac. So definitely the Mac Pro is better for gaming, but you don't buy this machine for gaming. So in some real world experience in some video editing, the popular Bruce X test, the Mac Pro obliterated the iMac taking literally half of the time, 31 seconds. Then I took a 5 minute 4K clip and pasted it on the timeline with one color grading layer, then left it rendering on both the machine. The Mac Pro took 4 minutes and 29 seconds, while the iMac took 30 seconds more, then exported and they scored the same 27 minutes 46 seconds. But what does it mean? Well, it means that where we need the GPU during the rendering, the D300 makes a 30 second difference, but once it's done, it's all CPU job, and they have similar CPU, so similar exporting times. This proves that for my Final Cut Pro 10 workflow, I basically don't need a powerful GPU, but just a better CPU that will drastically reduce my editing time. Reason why I'm planning to upgrade to the 12 core CPU in the Mac Pro. So, in conclusion, which one is better? 
Well, for the price, the iMac packs also a beautiful all-in-one design, a 2K display and a very loud couple of speakers. The Mac Pro is just a bad value. For that price, you need an extra $400 for a 4K monitor, you need external speakers, keyboard and mouse. So in my opinion, you should go with the late 2013 iMac. For me, this machine is perfect because it lets me a great CPU that how I show you is the bottleneck of my workflow. It has beautiful design and better thermals. Also, the fact that this is a Pro machine, the 2009 Mac Pro got software update for 10 years. I mean, will be longer supported by Apple. Also, because unlike this iMac with Nvidia, this has AMD GPU that are the way to go for Apple in the future. So, Catalina will be 100% sure the latest update for this iMac but probably not for this Mac Pro. Also, we have 6 Thunderbolt 2 ports against 2 Thunderbolt 1 ports, so I can, in the future, use an eGPU. So, that's all for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know which one you prefer. Be sure to like or dislike this video, comment and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned on Shade of Tech. Ciao!